Most new cars today have driver assistance features that can steer, accelerate, and brake a vehicle in response to their surroundings. The best examples might even lull drivers into a false sense of security. In fact, a Tesla owner was arrested for riding around in the backseat of his car. But get this, we've gathered vehicles from nearly every major brand and every last one of them allowed the systems to drive the car with nobody in the driver's seat. This is way more than just a Tesla issue. These systems, which in many cases are now standard across automakers' entire lineups, use one or more cameras to detect lane lines and apply appropriate nudges to the steering to keep the vehicle between the lines. And they generally use radar for adaptive cruise control that tracks a vehicle ahead and then adjusts your car speed to the flow of traffic. While most of these systems have similar functionality, there are large differences in how closely they expect the driver to remain in the loop. To tease out these differences, and to see if Tesla is indeed an outlier, we gathered 17 different vehicles, one from nearly every major automaker, to see just how closely they expect the driver to remain engaged and attentive, and what happens when the driver isn't. For our first test, with adaptive cruise control set to 60 miles per hour and lane centering active, we unbuckled the driver's seat belt. Some, such as the Subaru, immediately canceled all driver aids. Others, such as the Teslas and Cadillac, went even further, braking to a stop. But the majority of today's vehicles did nothing in this scenario. For our second test, again with cruise set to 60 miles per hour and lane centering active, we took our hands off the wheel to see how much time passed before the vehicle gave its first warning and then when the system shut down. The most conservative bunch, the Cadillac, Ford, Volvo, Toyota, and Lexus called it quits within 21 seconds, while the Hyundai kept going for 91 seconds, covering a mile and a half without hands on the wheel. We then repeated the second test, only this time we tried to trick each vehicle into thinking that we had our hands on the wheel by draping a two and a half pound ankle weight over one of the spokes. That fools the vast majority of today's systems, which monitor torque at the wheel as a proxy for driver attentiveness. But the ones that rely on touch instead, such as the BMW and the Mercedes, couldn't be gamed by the weight. In those cases, we also tried affixing tape around the steering wheel, and when that didn't work, a zip tie, but no dice. We had to adjust the parameters of our test for GM Super Cruise. It's currently the only system to allow hands-free driving for extended periods of time, although Ford will launch a similar system called Blue Cruise later this year. Super Cruise relies on an infrared camera pointed at the driver to determine whether sufficient attention is being paid to the road. And because it only works on limited access highways that have already been mapped, we had to use a real road rather than a test track. We worked with the state of Indiana to close a section of highway for a couple hours. And for Super Cruise, we instead tested its capability by taking our eyes off the road rather than hands off the wheel. It shut us down, but even today's most sophisticated system isn't foolproof as we were able to trick it with a pair of gag glasses that are emblazoned with eyeballs. Finally, we went for the full Monty, getting out of the driver's seat and letting the car fend for itself and every last vehicle let us use its systems with no one in the driver's seat. Most of them, when saddled with a weight on the helm, would mind the steering and speed for as long as you dare. We should pause here to say that we took great care to do all this testing in the safest manner possible, and doing any of this on public roads is flagrantly dangerous. We performed all of our testing, with the exception of Super Cruise mentioned earlier, at the FT Techno Proving Ground in Fowlerville, Michigan. Their three-mile oval track provided a perfect highway-like scenario for our test. For the part where we exited the driver's seat, we took even greater care, using a hockey stick with a bracket that we fabricated on the end of it so we could attach it to each vehicle's brake pedal. That way, at any time, we could reach over and hit the brakes and safely bring the vehicle to a stop. We also used a lead vehicle to bring the test vehicle to a stop before climbing over the center console so that a misplaced foot didn't jerk the steering wheel and send us 
toward calamity. So what did we learn? While some vehicles cancel driver aids when the seat belt is unlatched, a determined fool can simply buckle this belt over an empty driver's seat, and no vehicle can tell the difference. That's right, while every riding lawnmower can detect a missing driver, no car today can. Even though every vehicle has a sensor in the passenger seat for airbag activation purposes, no car has one in the driver's seat. The BMW, Mercedes, and Cadillac fared the best against driver misuse, with the Germans having a touch-sensitive steering wheel sensor and Cadillac Super Cruise remaining active for only 18 seconds with no one behind the wheel. Unless, of course, you rig up a mannequin wearing eyeball glasses in the seat. As these systems continue to gain capability, we suspect drivers, who are already trading tips on owners' forums about how to trick these systems, will become increasingly emboldened to take risks. This is not just a Tesla problem, but one that affects the entire industry. Automakers should close these loopholes to head off future idiocy.